my life verse is John 17, 4. I have glorified you here on earth. I finished the job you gave me to do. Started in uh, 1981. Uh, somebody came, I was doing root canals then before I saw the light and let somebody else do them. And uh, a guy was on the phone and he said, have you ever thought about pulling teeth in Mexico on Aztec Indians? I said, no. And he said, well, will you pray about it? I said, yeah. I'm walking back to the chair. I start back on the root canal. And then something I remember an evangelist said one time, why do you have to pray about something that God's already addressed? I first met Bill in the fall of 1979 as a student at Sanford University. He was attending his Sunday school class at Shades Mountain Baptist Church. I remember in 1981, in the fall, he came back to report on his first ever mission trip. He said he was going to Mexico, and he did. He was working in the Central Highlands. He's never looked back. He's been out of the country every year, either going on or leading or both mission trips since 1981. I've known Bill for over 18 years, and Bill understands that he has been um, entrusted with this ability or gift of dentistry. And because of that, he feels like that he can help people uh, to make life better for them, and at the same time, use that to share the gospel with them. How do you think God feels if he gave you a talent and it's in a box, it's a gift, and you go your whole life and you never open it? We tell the whole congregation, Bill, as a dentist, is going over to wherever and he's using his skills and abilities for that. But what that does is that begins to resonate with other people uh, there in our congregation. And it gets them to be thinking, how can I use my own uh, vocational training to be used in missions? And it could be downtown or it could be, you know, around the world. He's not just a dentist. You know, he's a follower of Christ, 365, 24-7. And he takes it seriously that he's on mission, whether it's in his office in Birmingham, uh, whether it's uh, uh, speaking to a, a group of disadvantaged youth, or whether it's working with uh, young ladies who are uh, coming off drug addiction and, and uh, uh, sex trafficking at the Love Lady Center. Acts 1-8 tells us, it doesn't give us the option, it says you will be my witnesses. You know, the word legacy is strong in my belief. The L, you live a life that pleases Him. The E, you emulate His example. The G, you be a giver, not a getter. The A, you accept people where they are. I love Paul to see content in any circumstance. And the why is that you make a difference. Well, that's why I do that. Because I want to make a difference. I think that the impact that he's had is that uh, we see him model what uh, Christ said, I've accomplished what you give me on earth and I've glorified your name. And I think that's, he has uh, made an impact on it, not only students, but his family and, and others in terms of, of answering that call of being obedient to Christ wherever he is. So I said one time, if you're not a missionary, you're a mission field. I don't want to be a mission field.